humans have been around for a hot minute. Roughly 3 million years, if you include all species belonging to the Homo genus. Now yes, this is still an instant in the grand scheme of things, but a few million years is in some ways no joke, and has given us plenty of time to both see and witness pretty interesting and cool things, as well as some other things that I for one am just glad are no longer around. And this included some really chaotic environments, which sometimes was due to the climate, but more often than not, it was due to what those environments held. In other words, their inhabitants. As once upon a time, our ancestors found themselves sharing the neighborhood with an array of unimaginable animals, like saber-toothed cats, allosaur-sized bears, elephants larger than T-Rexes, and the list goes on. Therefore, it's no surprise that a few of these guys ended up yoinking some of our own, which we know about through direct fossil evidence. And while every human killer is obviously terrifying, there are levels, as some are definitely scarier or more giant than the rest, which thus makes you wonder, or at least makes me wonder, what was the biggest predator that we had to share an environment with? And more specifically, what was the largest animal ever to regularly prey on humans? And I'm not going to count things like killer whales or sperm whales, as one, they typically inhabit areas quite isolated from civilization, and humans don't make up their natural prey. And so with these rules clarified, it turns out that the answer to both of our questions is actually just one animal that still in fact breathes to this very day. Crocodiles. These guys are the largest reptiles currently on Earth, and are found virtually anywhere where it is warm enough. They also happen to be the deadliest animals to humans, when you emit things like disease transmission, venom, and poison. So in other words, the deadliest animal that kills us because it considers us prey. And unsurprisingly, they get pretty darn huge, with saltwater crocodiles, the biggest of the bunch, sometimes weighing slightly over a ton, which is heavier than the largest terrestrial carnivore, the polar bear. Now I will say, while I can honestly say that I've told you the truth right now, I may not have told you all of it, because just like the term humans, the term crocodile can be a bit vague. And when I was talking about crocodiles being the answer, I was referring to the genus Crocodilus, not a specific species. This genus is one of the only two genera of true crocodiles left. And just like the genus Homo, Crocodilus has been around for a respectable amount of time, and actually much longer than us, with roots going back 25 million years. So obviously, with them existing so long, they have created a lot of absolute units along the way. And thanks to our bad luck, it turns out that the biggest of them all, which is also, by the way, likely the largest true crocodile to ever exist, happened to live pretty much side by side with early man. This was Crocodilus thorbjarnasoni. Despite having caused humanity a bunch of nightmares, this predator was actually forgotten by us for over a million years, and was only rediscovered after a team in Kenya discovered massive bones. To be exact, skulls in the bank of the ancient, but still standing Lake Turkana. Now these skulls had clearly come from a croc, though due to their sheer enormity, it was also understood that they could not have represented a modern crocodile, because they were simply too big. Too big, as in the average one found, was just about as large as the largest collected saltwater crocodile skulls ever discovered. And their extinct nature was further verified by carbon dating, which found the bones ranged in time from between the Pliocene and Pleistocene epochs covering a period of between 5.3 and 1.8 million years ago. And there's absolutely no question that during this span of existence, Crocodilus thorbjornasoni would have been its domain's top predator, and the bones indicated a body length previously not seen in this genus, with the largest specimens possibly having grown to be 7.6 meters or 25 feet. Which just to put that into perspective, the longest saltwater crocodile ever recorded didn't even crack 21 feet or 6.4 meters, and most of the time, they are much, much smaller. What's more, is that the method used to estimate its size is one that typically yields underestimates, leading to the researchers believing that a maximum beyond its current estimate is very much reasonable, with individuals likely exceeding 27 feet or 8.2 meters. And the cherry on top, we only have 9 specimens, meaning that while this might be speculative, I don't think it's a stretch to say that there are definitely bigger specimens out there. Now, by length alone, this predator was huge, but it was also extremely robust for its size, basically being a biological swimming tank, so you could say, and resulting in a weight that might have exceeded 2.5 tons. In other words, larger than your average hippopotamus. And so at this size, it obviously didn't have to worry about Jack. But just in case it did, it also had the classic crocodilian armor, which prevented it from sustaining a wide range of injuries, and made it that much more invulnerable. Additionally, with a skull that giant, it's believed to also have had a bone vaporizing bite that easily outclassed the bite of its living relative, the saltwater crocodile, and realistically making it one of the strongest biters on Earth during its time. 
allowing it to easily dish out unimaginable damage with single snaps. Which is, uh, an unfortunate reality that likely befell our own kind. And actually, all sorts of our kind, seeing that Homo wasn't the only hominin to call this region home, with other known genera including Australopithecus, Kenyanthropus, Paranthropus, and not one, but two different species of Homo, the Habilis and Rudolfensis. Back then, the area would have been covered by multiple expansive deep lakes and rivers that supplied humans with an abundance of fresh water and resources. However, this would also turn out to be the bane of their existence, seeing that the deep waters offered more than enough coverage for the giant Thor Bjornasoni, allowing it to conceal its behemoth body and stage surprisingly fast ambushes, where they used their giant tails and powerful muscles to grab prey before they knew what got them. Something else that is surprising is the fact that statistically speaking, over 80% of you guys watching are not subscribed. So if you made it this far, do me a favor and hit that sub button. Now back to the video. However, what's really interesting is that despite us knowing for a fact that this giant croc called Turkana home and that crocodiles in general hunt humans, there have still been no hominin bones to date which have been found with direct attack marks. Now, researchers are confident that our ancestors were definitely nipped by these guys. But that brings up the question then, Where's the bones? Well, turns out that one of the possible answers to this mystery is a rather grim one, as researchers speculate that given their monstrous sizes and the comparable tininess of our kind, there was simply no evidence left behind in the wake of a successful attack. In other words, we usually got swallowed whole. And this honestly makes sense. Let's picture this. A similar predator to prey size matchup would be a modern day saltwater crocodile versus a French bulldog. Yeah, yikes. The other potential answer that seeks to solve the question is also not a great one, but a much more preferable one, as it hypothesizes that hominins were very well aware of the crocodiles that lurked in the waters, and actually considered them danger numero uno. And therefore, using our much smaller bodies and perceptive nature, we learned how to avoid these crocodiles quite well. However, even in this scenario, researchers do think it's almost guaranteed that we definitely got snapped up at least a couple of times. Funnily enough though, or perhaps not so funnily, even if we decide to admit the Thor Bjornasoni as a contender, given the lack of direct evidence for predation, Crocodilus still wins the title of being the largest animal to have regularly hunted humans. And the craziest part is that you don't even have to change time periods to see the new winner, as at the exact same time, another giant croc prowled the waters of Africa, Crocodilus anthropophagus, which translates to human eater if that's any indication. While overlapping in time of existence, the Anthropophagus is generally considered to be younger, only popping into existence near the time the Thorbjörnarsani went extinct. And it was actually very closely related to our good friend, but differed in a few small areas, one being size. Although to call it a difference is not really fair, because ultimately this newer croc was basically just as massive, with specimens gathering estimates of around 7.5 meters or 25 feet in length, while weighing over 2 tons as well. Additionally, it seems that this younger crocodile was far more violent, as we have not one, but multiple fossils from hominins, namely the habilis, that bore crocodilian bite marks attributed to this species. In many cases, the bites were found on the legs of the victims, suggesting ambush attacks. And actually, in one very bizarre case, an attack seems to show an exceptionally unlucky fella who happened to not only get his leg removed forcibly by the anthropophagus, but then proceeded to get mauled by a completely different predator at the same time. A big cat. So clearly, Mother Nature seemed to have an out for Homo habilis. And unfortunately, things only got worse. As you might imagine, paleontologists started to wonder why the Anthropophagus was leaving all these fossilized bite marks, while the Thorbjörnarsoni did not. After all, the two weren't so different in size. And the answer is a bit concerning, because what researchers found is that all the bite marks came from crocodiles that fit a certain size threshold. Specifically, it was only crocs under a certain size that ever showed with direct attack evidence, while larger specimens were never identified through bite marks, which again matches the earlier horrific hypothesis that I mentioned, with the idea being that once crocs reached a certain size, they simply stopped leaving any traces of us behind. Quite devilish if you ask me. Which is why it's so fitting that despite these two ancient crocodiles being very similar in appearance to modern ones, they did share one key difference. They had horns or rather, features that resembled horns. In the Thorbjörnarsani, they materialized through its prefrontal bones, which were located above its eyes and resembled raised rims, a feature that is actually seen in the occasional Nile crocodile today, but theirs tended to be relatively larger and a standard feature, not an exception. Meanwhile, 
the Anthropophagus took it to a whole nother level, with its horns being situated above its ears instead of its eyes. And they were much more pronounced than what's seen in nearly all crocodiles, dead or alive, with them actually being so distinct that it was nicknamed a horned crocodile. And the males in particular sported these prominent features, leading to the idea that they were used to increase perceived size during battles, for either territory or for mates. But whatever the case, their presence certainly did not help in making these crocodiles look more friendly. And they were definitely the kind of predators that you would know to immediately stay away from. And in the end, it wouldn't have only been humans or primates that were on the lookout for these crocodiles, seeing that like the crocs of the present, these guys were generalist predators that snatched up absolutely anything that they could, which basically means everything, possibly even including the largest animals in the lands, like rhinos, hippos, and even small elephants. And really, the only silver lining in all of this is that thankfully, both of their ranges didn't seem to be that expansive. After all, both genera were essentially known from just one area. Of course, it is well within reason to assume that we are simply missing a lot of fossils, which could suggest a more expansive range. But on the flip side, perhaps the limited finds is a partial sign that their size came at a cost, rendering very deep bodies of fresh water their only options for residence. After all, a giant croc would be susceptible to overheating, and therefore might be forced to rely solely on deeper, cooler waters, whereas smaller crocs fare much better in this department. Secondly, while crocodiles do have relatively slow metabolisms, with saltwater crocodiles actually needing less calories than we do, being supersized still wouldn't have helped in times of struggle when resources were dwindling. And with all things considered, it is currently thought that their size is what eventually doomed these mega crocs, hindering their range and making them vulnerable to climate change, which is something that did not bode well during the Pleistocene epoch, a time known for having a very fluctuating climate. And by 1.8 million years ago, both were presumably long gone. There is also a good chance that their quote-unquote superior stats made it hard for them to keep up with the competition during their end days, which ironically mainly consisted of their own kind, other crocodilians, with both areas where they lived possessing multiple types. For example, Lake Dracana alone was home to three other genera, the still extant Messistops, the Nile crocodile, which lives there today in large numbers, potentially up to 12,000 strong, and then the respectively giant Euthycodon, who on top of coincidentally living alongside the Thorbjörnarsunny, is the contested competitor I briefly hinted at for the title of the largest true crocodile, with max estimates ranging from 7.2 meters to 8.6 meters, or 24 to 28 feet. However, before we let out another sad sigh for our ancestors, there was some more redeeming qualities about this croc. First, the method used to find its size is one that actually exaggerates, unlike the one we used to measure the Thorbjörnarsunny. So in other words, it may not have been as massive as once thought. And then secondly, it didn't seem to be adapted for killing huge animals, because instead of possessing large, robust, and powerful jaws, theirs were extremely elongated and narrow, almost mirroring the kind of snouts seen in living gavioloids, who are highly pecivorous. Additionally, unlike most true crocodiles, its teeth were definitely designed more for fish over megafaunal mammals, with each tooth being slender, isodont, and pointed in order to maximize gripping. Thus, despite its huge size, it might not even have been able to properly hunt our kind. Although truthfully, I personally would not want to test that theory. In addition, what's really interesting about this guy is that while the two smaller crocodiles persisted to today, this genus, like the Thorbjörnarsunny and Anthropophagus, died out during the Pleistocene before Homo sapiens arose, once again suggesting that large size isn't always the answer. Now with all this said, while they're not as diverse as they once were, crocodiles still retain that spot of being the largest predators within Africa, as well as in many other places for that matter, and thus keeping that tense relationship between us and them alive and well. And something else that is alive and well is our website. So if you want some cool art for your wall that happens to feature custom paleo art and dinosaurs, as well as support the channel, consider go checking it out. Anyways, thanks for watching, and until next time, Onyx Things Zoo.